Welcome to this video tutorial on how to set up a render using Twinmotion for Rhino. In this video I'm going to be utilizing Twinmotion. Twinmotion is a render plugin that connects into Rhino and allows you to create animation and still images that utilizes the power of the Unreal Engine. Now to begin with we're just going to go quickly through how you can acquire Twinmotion. Twinmotion can be found on the website. It's a free to download plugin it essentially connects into the Unreal Engine but is a standalone piece of software. If you hit on the download now button under their website you can download it via the Epic Games launcher so you have to download that launcher and then from there you can download the software. As well as downloading Twinmotion to utilize it with Rhino we also need to download a plugin that allows us to kind of connect it to Rhino. You can find these just on their download page under this number three here under compatibility plugins scroll down look for where it says for rhino here we go hit download options and there we can download the datasmith exporter for either windows or mac and this allows us to connect twinmotion into our rhino file once you download that there's a little video on how to do it here but it's very simple you just click on the download button download the plugin and double click on that executable file to download that and install it for your computer once you install that and open your Rhino file, you're going to see this toolbar here called Datasmith. And Datasmith essentially allows you to synchronize your model in Rhino with Twinmotion. Now usually with this, I usually try and dock it just somewhere where I'll remember it, on the side perhaps, or on the kind of main toolbar here. We don't need it all the time, but it's useful to have it somewhere handy that you can refer to when syncing the model. Now before we jump into Twinmotion, I'm just going to do a few things with my Rhino model to make sure it's set up nicely to allow me to apply materials quickly and easily in Twinmotion. To do this, you can see in my 3D layer file, I've set up a layer for each of the main materials in my model. We've got kind of metal, we've got water here, and each of these have their own layer but also have a corresponding material assigned to them. Now to assign a material in Rhino, all you need to do is type in materials into your command line like so and it will open up the material tab and from here we can make a new material just by clicking on this add material option i usually make them physically based and with that material we can usually make it a color so it stands out let's make this one a kind of dark green ish and then we can give it a name i'm going to call this one path and to apply it to a particular layer you can just right click on that material assign to layers and then click on the layer that you want to assign it to like so and you can see here under this material palette that each of my layers have a material assigned to them if i look at it in the rendered view it's going to look a little bit like this where we can see a different color for each of those materials and this is going to make it really easy to assign new materials once we jump into twin motion so from here i'm going to now open up twin motion and we're going to load this model in Twinmotion can be found in the Epic Games launcher as it's connected to the Unreal Engine and it's part of that kind of Epic Games package. So once you've installed it, you can find it by opening up the Epic Games launcher and under the tab called Twinmotion here. And from here, we can just hit the launch button to open up the program. Once it's open, you're going to get a little window like this where we can set a new scene. Usually I'll just click the cross and it will open up a new project for us. Now, before I bring my model in, I'm just going to delete out these kind of default models that are on the project here. We don't really need them and I find they just kind of get in the way once we drop our model in on top. So now I've just deleted those by just clicking them and hitting delete. I'm now going to import my Rhino model into this file. To do this, I'm going to go down to the import button at the bottom here. We're going to click on the plus here and then we're going to locate our model and usually if you've got your Rhino model open like I do here it will pop up there and I can just hit import. We don't usually need to play around with any of these options so we can just hit that import button there. Now sometimes your model will jump straight in like this and because I've loaded this in before it's kind of hopped straight in here. If you find that there's a little kind of red tag in this little icon here it means your model's not properly linked and all you need to do is just go back to Rhino go to your datasmith tab here and hit that synchronize button that will just synchronize whatever last minute changes you've done here with your model in Twinmotion and now you can see I've got my model in here which is linked to that model in Rhino and here we can see if we zoom out slightly we can see the model there and it's being rendered with some lighting here we've got the kind of materials i've set which are just those base color materials 
Now, just to kind of orientate ourselves, we can use the right mouse button again, as you do in Rhino, to kind of rotate around the view. You can use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out, and we can also select objects into in motion. Now I find the kind of panning and moving a little bit tricky to kind of get my head around at first, um, but a useful way to kind of lock yourself into particular objects is by using the focus button or the F key on your keyboard. So if you select an object and hit the F key, it will focus in on that object. And this is usually a quite a useful way of just orientating yourself around a model in twin motion because sometimes you can find depending on the scale of the model it can be a little bit jittery or you can find it's quite hard to kind of orientate yourself. Now what we're going to do with this model is we're going to set up a camera, we're going to tweak some of the lighting and then we're going to start to apply some base materials to this model as just a way to set up an initial render in the software. Now to begin with I'm just going to set up my camera view and to do that I'm going to click down on the media tab here and then we're just going to move my camera into a position that I want to create the view from. So I'm going to do it roughly at first and then we're going to tweak it a bit later. But I know I sort of want a view almost in elevation of this structure on the hill. I can also hold down the scroll wheel on the mouse and that pans around in the view as well. Something like this and we'll zoom it in slightly. And once I'm kind of happy with that view, I'm just going to click on the plus tab here. What this is going to do is it's essentially saving out that view for us as a still image and once we've done that you see on the right hand side here in this properties panel we've got access to all of these sort of environment camera and render options here now from here i'm going to go to camera and i'm going to scroll down and i'm just going to play around with this focal length uh, by default into a motion it's set to an 18 millimeter which i find is quite wide it makes looks stuff look quite distorted so if you just scroll that in and i'm going to set it maybe to around a 30 and then I'm just going to zoom out again and what you'll find is it just flattens out that view a little bit for you makes it a little bit more kind of aesthetically pleasing in there and you've got a little bit less warping on it as well so it's slightly nicer kind of view angle there we've also got this option under the lens under details here we can scroll down called parallelism which is quite useful just to set your uprights straight so all your lines will be parallel to the camera and this is quite nice as well because it stops any unwanted distortion going on you can kind of see it's just a subtle tweak there but if you're kind of really close to the model you'll see it quite strongly so once I've done that I'm also going to go to the environment and we can also tweak the time of day here as well so by default it's set to sort of 10 30 but if I scroll through I can change that lighting as well if we want it sort of early morning perhaps it might also be that actually the sun's in the wrong position for your model so you can always go down to the location tab and just offset that angle as well and i actually want the sun to be kind of coming in from this right hand side for this particular view so i'm just going to set it something like this where we've got some nice light and shadow on the model there so you can always go back tweak these later as well it's good practice once you've made any changes just to go back to your image and hit this refresh button and it will kind of reset that image to the changes you've made so it will save out the kind of tweaks you've made to the camera and other points so those are just the general camera settings and lighting settings you can tweak there now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the materials tab just by clicking materials down here and we're going to start to set some new materials for our model now this can be done in a couple of ways. We can either edit out the materials I've already made, which are imported directly from Rhino. And you can see here, they're the same color as my base Rhino model was under these materials I've got here. So we can work with those and we can start to reset those, or we can use some of the materials found in Twinmotion's pre-made materials library. So I'm gonna begin by just bringing in one of these materials from the materials library. And I think we'll start with the water here because it's gonna make the biggest effect to our scene. So I'm just gonna scroll down, find where it says water here, and you'll see there's a sort of preset made series of different water materials here. For this, I'm gonna use this Lake One water, and we're just gonna click and drag it into our materials palette down there. Now when applying materials into the scene, we can do it quite easily just by clicking on the material and dragging it into the scene like so. What this would do is before I let go of that left mouse button, you'll see if I hover over, it's just essentially gonna replace any material with this particular material, i.e. this lake one that I'm applying. So all of the walls with that wall texture will be replaced if I click this on there. I just want this on the water, so I'm just gonna click and drop it on the water for now. 
Now you'll see when I bring that in, it's got this sort of waves, it's got a nice animation to it as well, and that's all set up by default. So it's quite nice that we've got all of these properties set for us. You'll find if you want to tweak any of these, if we select the material and go over here into our properties panel, you'll see we've got this lake material here. It's got our kind of color, which has been set. It's got our water depth here. We've got our waves as well. And we can actually start to go in and tweak some of these settings. So it might be the intensity of the water is a bit high. Maybe I'm going to just dial that down. We've got a slightly softer motion. We might have the wave size might be a bit high, so you might want to kind of tweak that as well. We've got the direction that the river's flowing as well. So you can start to tweak all of these properties, just trying to fine tune exactly how you want your image to look as well. Now, as well as this, we can also start to tweak out some of the materials I've already made. So let's take this wall texture, which is already sort of being applied to this red area. And let's say I kind of want this to actually be a real texture and not just a color. So you can find when you click on a material, under the material palette here, we've got the color, UV, which is essentially the mapping of that, roughness, clear coat, metallic. You've got all of these properties here, which we can start to play around with. I'm gonna start with the color, and under this details tab, I'm going to open this out and you'll see there's an option there for a texture. So I'm just going to click on that option, go on the open panel, and we're just going to drop in this kind of nice red concrete texture I have here. Now you'll find I've dropped that in, it's a kind of pinky color, but it's still this red. And the reason for that is it's also applying a tint. And this often happens when you're bringing a material straight from Rhino. It will apply this kind of tint color to it based on whatever the material color was. If we don't want that, we just go back and set it back to a kind of white color there, like so. And you'll find now it's picking up that kind of pinky color. It might be that we want it a little bit more red, so you can always reset that here. You can see as I kind of scroll across, it's just adding a bit of that tint to it, like so. As well as on the color, we can also set the mapping of this. Now, by default, it's set to off, but if I click on world space, and then we go on scale, you can see here, it's quite subtle, but I'm just setting the scale of that texture on my object. Now, when we're this far away, it might be quite hard to see, so we can sort of zoom in a little bit, and we can use the F key again to do that. And there you can kind of see the scale of that texture on the object. If 10 is too small still, you can always type in a number, and we can make it slightly larger there as well. And if we want to go back to our view, we just go back to that media tab, click on there and then we're back here again. So that's how we can start to actually work directly with the materials that we've made and you can set the mapping there, roughness which is essentially if there's any shininess we can set that up. I could also put a texture in there and we could kind of use some of these kind of roughness or dirt maps we've got here to set the shininess of that. I'm going to do a separate video really kind of doing a deep dive into some of these texture creations as well where we're going to go through making different materials and how you can set them up here. So with that we can start to set different materials and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pause the video and we're going to just add a landscape material, add a metal material just using the same setup. Either I'll find some from my list here or I'll kind of create some from scratch uh, the same way we did the walls here. So I'm going to pause this video and then we're going to jump back in once we've set those materials up. Now we've applied all of our textures on, we're now ready to export this out as an image or a video if we want to as well. So to do that, we're then going to click back on our media file. We're just going to refresh this and it might be now that you've made this, there might be a particular camera tricks you want to do. You might want to sort of reframe that view or you could kind of tweak the camera settings if you want to. So once you do that, just kind of make sure you hit that refresh button so it's saved. Now we've got the image here and perhaps you also like the kind of reflections on the water so maybe you want to export a video as well. So I'm also going to click on the video tab that's next to it. We can click on the plus to create a video and currently this is setting a 10 second video. Maybe you want to make it a little bit longer. Let's make it 15 for the sake of this particular preview. So we've got our image and our video here. Now we can actually set the kind of settings of those just by clicking on the image. Going now over to image here and we can set the output size. You can have it in HD. You could set it to kind of 4K if you wanted. Usually for images, I'd say set to 4K. It gives you a few options later if you want to crop it. For videos, you 
might want to sort of set it up slightly higher resolution as well just by clicking on the video again and going down to the video tab here um, obviously if you set a higher resolution it's going to take longer to export out so just bear that in mind when setting these resolutions to how long you're willing to wait to export out your kind of final media here so once I've got those two set up I'm going to go to the export button there we're going to scroll up we're going to make sure my image is selected and click on that image so we've got that one set I'm going to set it as a JPEG and then I'm going to also click on the video click on my video here and we're going to set that as an mp4 for a frame rate of 30 frames a second there and once I've done that we then all need to do is hit start export we can pick a folder for that like so and then we're just going to click export here and depending on the speed of your computer in terms of its graphics card depending on the resolution you're exporting at um, this will take a kind of longer or shorter amount of time but usually i found it's pretty quick with most machines because it's using real-time kind of rendering from unreal engine it's quite fast at sort of exporting it out um, and it really just depends on those textures you're using you'll find although it says it's got a kind of huge wait time here for like four hours it definitely won't take that long so we'll let it go i'm going to pause the video and then afterwards i'll kind of reflect on how long it took to export out and we'll wrap it up there now this is finished exporting that took around five minutes on my machine to do both the video and the image and here you can see we've got the kind of high resolution image we've exported and also that kind of video as well which you can see here which is basically just that kind of 15 seconds of the water moving reflecting my kind of building on the hill there so that was just a kind of quick introduction into how to begin to use Twinmotion to create both videos, little animations and renderings using your Rhino files. In some previous videos, and we're going to go in kind of more detail about using materials in Twinmotion, how to set up kind of different lighting setups, going kind of more deep dive into adding vegetation, foliage and other kind of assets on that landscape as well. So do kind of check out the channel if you want to watch any more videos on rendering using Rhino, Twinmotion and other software. Um, and thank you for watching.